Hello, this is Pat Cahill from Pat Cahill Metalworks, and today we're going to work with a, a piece of reticulation silver. And this is, um, the silver is 80% silver and 20% copper. And what you do is you prepare it very similar to what you do if you're going to Kimbo um, sterling silver, where you want to bring up the fine silver to the, to the top surface. So a lot of the steps are similar, but in the end you get a totally different effect. So this is 18 gauge reticulation silver, again 80% silver, 20% copper. And what I'm going to do is kneel it and then we're going to burnish it. And I'll show you what that means. So I'm going to kneel it, then we're going to put it in the pickle, get rid of the copper, and then burnish it with a, a brass brush with soap and then wash it off, dry it, and repeat the process. And that process is actually going to have to be repeated quite often. Um, some people say up to 15 times, so it's a real... You won't, you won't have to suffer through that, I will. Oh, before I start this, what I like to do, and I hope I haven't got it already too hot. Nah, it's fine. I like to, um... Crop it up a little bit, at least initially. Just with some fine sanding sponge. Just I don't want to. What this does, probably not much, but what I think it does is gives it a little bit more surface area because you have these little nooks and crannies, although you know microscopic. Um, well, not microscopic, but very small. So that gives it more surface area for the copper to come up. Anyway, I do it. I'm not sure if it really matters. So we're going to kneel it. I'm going to run through this first time with you. And maybe even just one more or later on in the process so you can see the difference. Because right now what you're see is that the silver will turn, I don't know, a darker brownish color showing that it's been annealed. And later on, it won't. It'll just have this fine silver look to it, which is sort of a dull uh, matte silver finish. So you can see this is being annealed. The nice thing, one of the, I don't know if it's a nice thing, we don't have to worry about uh, fire scale here. We're going to take care of that with the, uh, the burnishing and the pickling. By bringing up the fine silver, which does not show. I'm not sure stains, oxidation stains from the copper. Okay, so that's that's been annealed, and we'll put that in our pickle. And let that pickle, and I'll be right back for the next step. Okay, while well, I'm finishing the pickling, I want to show you my setup here. I have uh, just a jar of water to um, to wash off the uh, the pickling acid, and then I'll bring that over there. You won't see it. I have um, a nice big mug of soapy water and my brass brush, brass brush, and a place where I can do it, and then a big pot of water to clean off any of the soap that remains on the uh, on the, uh, the silver. You, you don't want to leave the soap behind because um, when you fire it you're going to get little soap stains in it. Okay, so I'm ready to take it out of the pickle now and put it in my water jar. And bring it over. It hasn't totally pickled. That's okay. We're going to be doing this so many times. Uh, 
It's not going to matter. I just have this cloth on under here so I don't get drips everywhere. Let's soak up some of the drips. You can see that that brings it back to a nice shine and that will happen more and more as we go on in this process. It could have been pickled more, but we will take care of that in subsequent steps. Okay. Wash that off. Dry it. And we're back to uh, annealing again. So, I scoop my camera over. Yeah, we're ready to anneal. So I'm going to do this process a lot of times. Um, like I said, 10 to 15 times is what's recommended. I'm going to do at least 10. And like I say, you're not going to suffer through it. So I'm going to cut. Then I'm going to bring you back when I get these firings more towards like what it should look like in the end. So I'm going to cut here and I'll bring you back. Okay, I thought I'd come back and little, give a little update. This is after uh, four rounds of doing what I showed you of uh, vanilling and then pickling. And what you will see is that it won't turn as dark. And it go from starting to look like it's turning a little bit dark. And I, I don't know if you can see it, but then it will get a, 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 a milky white haze on top of it. This is... This does not mean we're even close to done, but because when you're really done, you will never see it turn even a little bit brown like it is doing right now. But I thought I'd bring it in to show you just this little part here. Just a little update. I know, can you see that it's turning that little milky white? Still brown, but starting to get that milky white. So this is done annealing, and I'm going to do what I did before, put it in the pickle. And then from there, we're going to brass brush it, wash it, and do it again. I'll be back. Okay, I brought you back to show you just how different. This is, we're getting towards the end here. And as you heat this up, you really shouldn't see any brown. It should just turn it a sort of a milky white. It should be almost like you're uh, annealing fine silver. I don't know why you would anneal fine silver. It's so soft, <laughs> but yeah, sometimes you want to anneal fine silver. I know I do it, but that's usually after I've been banging on it for a while. See, as you can see, it's not turning brown. It's not showing oxidation. It's just turning a milky white. So that's when you know you're getting, basically, you're getting done. Once you start seeing this, do another two, three cycles. And you should we'll be good to go. So... I'm going to do another two or three of these cycles and then I'm going to bring it back and we're going to have the, the fun of reticulating this silver. So I'll be right back. All right, now that we've depletion gilded the piece of reticulated silver about 10 to 15 times, we're ready to uh, reticulate it. And that's just really what that's doing is it's melting the fine silver that we brought to the surface and odd sort of swirls and shapes and mountains. You get all sorts of things. It's actually quite hard to control exactly what it ends up looking like. But um, it's fun to see. The one thing I would say is that uh, when you're doing this, take your time, um, as always, and uh, Watch carefully when you get towards the end, because you don't want to burn a hole into, into your piece, and you will. You're just melt a hole right through it. 
if you're not careful. So this is going to take a, a little bit of time to really warm up because I am going to go slow. Maybe a little bigger swing in the beginning. And I might just speed along this part. Until we get to the interesting part where it starts to melt. Alright, it's starting to happen now. See it? Now this is when you want to be careful. Take your time, work on a spot, and then move over. Watch carefully because you don't, like I said, you don't want to. Um, melt through. This is going to be a cup, but you already know that. Duh. Okay, so I'm slowly going. If I see on the edge, I want to be careful of the edges though. They're, they're the ones that are going to go first. It's just going to go right through it. Because it gets more heat all the way around. You're exposed to more than one, just the flat top surface. You also got that edge surface. So this is the process. You can see that it's it's melting nice. You don't know what you're gonna get right away. But you can always go back and redo it to add a little more you know, dramatic looks to it. So, if you don't get it right the exact first time, it doesn't mean that you can't fix it. So, I mean, this is done right now, but I want it a little more dramatic look. At the risk of burning a hole right through it. Alright, so I'm going to stop there. And we pickle it, then we brush brush it, and I'll be back for that part. Not the pickle. I think it's done. Don't get greedy like me. I think we're going to have some nice little shapes there. So, into the quench. And then into the pickle and I'll be back. Okay, so here we have it. That's the top side. It's got some interesting features. Little pits here. Little mountains sort of over here. I like the, I like the back a lot better though. And it uh, it looks so much neater. That's 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 nice reticulation right there. So first, I thought I was going to make a cup bracelet out of this, and I still think I am, but I might embellish it with a stone or something. I'm not sure yet. I mean, right now it's it's good to go.
I could just uh, form this on the ring mandrel and ring mandrel on the the cuff mandrel, and uh, it'd be a nice, interesting cuff. But I don't want to make that decision right yet, so I'm going to leave this video as is, and maybe in a future video I will finish this some way. The other thing you can do is the other point of reticulating silver like this is you use it for accents on different things. So, although this is six by one and a third inches, so it makes a nice cuff, nice substantial cuff, especially since it's 18 gauge. Um, you can also just cut out little pieces in like areas, and that's what a lot of people do. They just take the areas that, that they think came out the best and then they use them as accents on other pieces of jewelry. So I'm going to leave that here and think about it and uh, maybe in a future show we're we come back to this piece. So thank you for watching and I hope to see you again sometime. Bye.